non sequitur. Meaning literally does not follow. A non sequitur is formally defined as any conclusion that does not follow from the premise or premises. We use non sequitur to specifically refer to arguments that do not follow from any logical train of thought. Often, no real connection exists from these non sequiturs to any version of reality. So who better than Kurt Cameron on the Bill O'Reilly show to exhibit the paramount of logical disconnect? And now for something completely different. Plus, Darwin said in order to prove evolution, which is the number one alternative to, to God, you've got to be able to prove transitional forms, one animal transitioning into another. And all through the fossil record and life, we don't find one of these. A crocoduck. There's just nothing like it. Red herring. A red herring is not so much a logical fallacy as a distraction technique. In response to an opponent's position, an irrelevant point is made. It can even be a valid point, but it does nothing to address the issue. The red herring is another common creationist tactic. Watch as John Pendleton dodges an argument about the age of natural fossils with the discussion of a boot. Some say, well, you need a long period of time to make fossils. Well, there's lots of fossils out there. Here's one of my favorite ones. This is a cowboy boot. This was found in West Texas. And uh, on the right hand image here, we see that the poor cowboy broke his leg and his leg and foot stayed inside the boot. Now they did a scan of the toe section, all five toe bones are in there. It's all fossilized. This was found in the 1980s. Argument from personal incredulity. In this fallacy, one argues that because they do not personally find a premise to be likely or believable, it cannot be true, regardless of evidence. The fallacy lies in presenting one's beliefs about a proposition as evidence. In the next clip, Michael Behe presents his favorite argument from personal incredulity, the bacterial flagellum. Note how he presents no evidence other than his own belief. I remember the first time I, I looked in a biochemistry textbook and I saw a drawing of something called a bacterial flagellum with all of its parts and all of its glory. It's had a propeller and a hook region and the, the drive shaft and the motor. And I looked at that and I said, that's an outboard motor. That's designed. You know, that's no chance assemblage of, of parts. Argument from ignorance. In this fallacy, an appeal to ignorance is made as one argues either that a premise is true only because it has not yet been proven false, or that a premise is false only because it has not yet been proven true. The God of the Gaps argument usually begins with an appeal to ignorance. The orange lady stumbles through an appeal to ignorance as she claims science has not yet given a good explanation for abiogenesis, which is true, but absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. How did life begin on Earth? Evolution tells to this question that life begin on Earth with a single cell suddenly appears. But we know that there is no room for chance in nature. Not even a single person could ever build a single cell with the advanced technologies of 20th century. Violation of the philosophy of science. Ah, this is one of our favorites. The most powerful tool to obtain truth about the natural world is the scientific method. However, science cannot be used to explain the truly supernatural. Whether or not you believe the supernatural exists, science makes no comment on the supernatural. Lee Strobel is the grand violator of the philosophy of science. First he stated that science made him an atheist, and then he stated it made him believe in God. It can do neither. Get a spine, Lee. Because I believe that by doing science, we find God. Equivocation. An equivocation is the misleading use of a word with more than one meaning. In creationism arguments, the most common equivocation is the word theory. In science, theory means a logically coherent model well supported by evidence. In popular usage, the definition of theory is closer to conjecture or opinion. Do not confuse the two. We see here creationist fallacies are not limited to Christianity. This Islamic gentleman is also having difficulty understanding the meaning of the phrase theory of evolution.
to start pose the question, how can you reconcile the Quran with Darwin's theory of evolution? Sister, I have not come across any book which says fact of evolution. All the books say theory of evolution. There is no book I have come across saying fact of evolution. False Dichotomy In a false dichotomy, two mutually exclusive options are set up as the only possible choices. Therefore, if one is true, the other must be untrue. The fallacy is that the options may not be mutually exclusive, or even related, and other choices may exist. Venom Fang X walks us through the classic evolution versus religion false dichotomy. And I vote this kid is five star creepy. Some people might say that maybe God used evolution to get us here. Well, that's not the God of the Bible, because the God of the Bible says that death came by man's sin. However, evolution says man came by death. Quite opposites. There's a stark contrast between the two. And only one is right, because they are diametrically opposites. In fact, that's proof in the Bible's favor, because if you take it at face value, it is a literal opposite of evolution in every way. In fact, you could come to the theory of evolution by simply looking at what the Bible says and then flipping it on its head. Begging the question. Also known as circular reasoning, begging the question is a fallacy where your conclusion is implicitly or explicitly assumed in your premise. Therefore, the illusion of logic is presented when in fact no proof has been made. Begging the question can be very subtly done. In the next clip, notice how the questioner assumes somebody wound up the universe. NASA scientist Robert Jastrow wrote, The second law of thermodynamics applied to the cosmos indicates the universe is running down like a clock. If it is running down, there must have been a time when it was fully wound up. The next obvious question is, who wound it up? Tautology. A specialized form of begging the question, a tautology occurs when the premise and conclusion of an argument are identical. While a tautology, like A equals A, is true, and the repeated statement may also be true, a tautology proves nothing outside of itself. The anthropic principle is a tautology leading to a false dichotomy. In the following clip, notice how the setup for the anthropic principle can be boiled down to, if things were different, then things would be different. For example, if you didn't have something like gravity that pulled matter together, you would never get planets, you wouldn't get stars, you wouldn't get any complex organisms. If you didn't have the strong nuclear force, there would be nothing to hold protons and neutrons together in the nucleus. And so you wouldn't have any atoms, so no chemistry. If you didn't have the electromagnetic force, you would have no bonding between chemicals. You'd have no light, and the list goes on. So you need all these sorts of fundamental principles have to be in place in order for life to occur. Wipe out one of those principles, wipe out one of those laws, no life.